The respiratory system is an amazing system. It has four main functions to start with. And these four processes of respiration first include just the idea of breathing. So breathing is the ventilation that consists of the inspiration and expiration. So you should know what those two words mean. And then there's the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide that goes on at the pulmonary capillaries. So this is the external respiration. Then the oxygenated blood is pumped through the heart and travels to the entire body. So that's the, re the transport of the respiratory gases. And then finally, that oxygen and the nutrients reach the systemic capillaries where internal respiration happens. So the main organs, the main respiratory organs in relationship to their surrounding structures are shown in this slide. And so uh, we can see the upper respiratory system shown first here, beginning with the nasal cavity, the pharynx, the throat, and the larynx, the, um, which is commonly thought of as the voice box. The lower respiratory tract begins down here at the trachea, the windpipe. The carina is where it splits to each of the bronchi and continues into the lungs from that point. So this chart is showing us the upper respiratory system so beginning at the nose, the sinuses included, the pharynx, and then the lower respiratory system begins at the larynx. So that's kind of the dividing point, the first, the beginning of the lower respiratory tract. And the lower respiratory tract continues with the trachea. The bronchial tree is after the carina where it splits, leading to the alveoli then the lungs, and then there's also a membrane surrounding the lungs, a wet membrane called the pleura, which is very important in the function of the lungs. So the nasal cavity is going to be found within the posterior external nose. It's divided by the nasal septum. And notice in the top of the nasal region is the olfactory mucosa which contains olfactory epithelium and respiratory mucosa and one thing that can happen is when we're inhaling strong chemicals these chemicals could temporarily cause anosmia which is the lack of smell if those chemicals are really really pungent so the nose and the paranasal sinuses they both are basically wet membranes. There's mucus and serous secretions that also contains lysozyme and defensins. And the nose and the paranasal sinuses are shown on this slide. So the function of the nasal conche is to filter heat and moisten the air. The paranasal sinuses, there's four of them, and the sinuses are... Um, spaces within bones. So they lighten the skull for that region. reason. They also secrete mucus, helps to warm and moisten the air. And many of you have experienced sinusitis, infections to the sinus membrane. We can get sinus pain in that specific area. Now onto the throat. And this slide shows us the three regions of the throat, the pharynx. And the pharynx travels from the base of the skull to about vertebra C6. The three regions are the nasopharynx, the oropharynx, and the laryngopharynx. So a little more in depth, the nasopharynx, which is a little more superior located. It is the air passageway posterior to the nasal cavity. The lining itself contains pseudostratified columnar epithelium. And the pharyngeal tonsils are called the adenoids, commonly. And these would be the ones that could be removed when you're younger, if you had your tonsils taken out. And then the pharyngeotympanic tubes, more easily called the auditory tubes, drain and equalize pressure in the middle ear and open into the lateral walls. So when your ears pop and you're, you're in a plane, 
or when you when you feel that sensation, that's because of the equalization of pressure between the middle ear and the pharyngeal region. So an infection of the sore throat, it could spread to the auditory tube because of this connection of the auditory tube. The next region of the oropharynx is the, um, or the next region of the pharynx is called the oropharynx. And in this region, we find a couple tonsils. The palatine tonsils are located in the lateral walls and the lingual tonsils are on the posterior surface of the tongue. So the word lingual sounds like language tongue. So the last part, the most inferior portion of the pharynx is the laryngeal pharynx. So this leads to the bottom of upper respiratory tract. Because the esophagus is also in the same region, it's a passageway for both food and air. And it's posterior to the upper right epiglottis. So this slide here is showing the pharynx, the larynx, and the upper trachea. So a few things that we've already talked about. 